you, Christine. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Chen Zhong Wang. I'm a lecturer from the College of Architecture and Urban Planning of Chongqing University. And today, my lecture's topic is about the comparative study on urban building complex in Shanghai and Hong Kong. I would also like to mention that this project is supported by National Nature Science Foundation of China. So, as is known to all, the Shanghai and Hong Kong have a lot of similarities. For example, they both set goals to become the world's financial center, and they both are on the hand on the on the dense habitat, and both of them have great development of urban building complex. And I would like to mention a little bit more about the urban building complex. So the urban building complex is a combination of mixed use sort and uh, building complex, and it's always mega scale and complex functions. And uh, it's always become the comprehensive service center and vital symbol of cities under dense habitat. And it always have tremendous influence on cities whole development and positive interactions with cities or aspect. And uh, the core value of the urban building complex would be the synergy. So in Chinese, it's xie tong xiao ying. And uh, to, to, to make more further research, we have divided the synergy into three aspects. The first, the direct synergy aspect lead to the financial value. And the second, the indirect synergy aspect lead to the space value. And finally, the space synergy, uh, the place synergy aspect lead to the urban value. And when we look and compare the urban building complex in Shanghai and Hong Kong, we find that there are really some projects with same developer and architect, architects emerging these years. For example, there's you know there's an IFC in Shanghai, not far away at the Lujiazui CBD, and there's also an IFC in the center of Hong Kong, and there are also a Times Square, Times Square in Causeway Bay, Hong Kong, and also uh, also another uh, Times Square at the middle of Huai Hai Road in Shanghai, and there's also a festival work in Hong Kong at the Kowloon Town, and uh, another festival work in Shanghai in the Wujiao Town area. So what interests us most is even these projects have same developer or designers, but they have different results. And uh, I uh, and we like we have done a series of comparative comparative study under the synergy theory. And today I'd like to use two IFCs as an example to show you our uh, to explore the reasons from three aspects above and try to find the main difference on developing urban building complex between Hong Kong and Shanghai. And uh, first of all, I'd like to show you our comparative study about the financial value. So if we compare these two projects location, we will find that these two projects are both located at the center of the CBD area of their cities. And their distance to the airport are similar. And the another thing very important is that the, the developer also all choose the number eight the lucky number in China as the, as the address of the project. And these two projects also have very, very similar logos, and also they have the similar slogans. They all get set, set goals to become the landmark or the commercial center of their cities. And uh, the Sing Hongkai property are all the leading pro developers of these two projects, and the architect Cesar Pele all attend these two projects. And if we compare the, the, the construction time of these two projects, we will find that uh, the IFC Shanghai was just in continuity of the IFC Hong Kong. And to, to compare these two projects, building clusters, they are, they are very similar, and they all have two, two main towers, and they all have the retail functions and shopping malls in the, IFC, uh, in the, in the podium places, and they all have a five-star hotel, and both of them have service apartments. And the gross cover, cover area and the gross floor area of these two projects are very similar too. And these two projects all have the office, retail, hotel, and service apartments as, as their main functions. And if we compare the functions of the uh, of, of partition of these two projects, the only, two, the only difference of these two projects is in IFC Hong Kong have more office area and less retail area. So as is known to all, 
to develop more retail areas is much more dangerous than to develop the obvious area. So that is to say, the developer do have some positive experience from the IFC Hong Kong project and they have much more confidence in the, in, the retail area, in the retail function in IFC Shanghai. And both of them has, have the Grand A hardware office and the facilities are, and the management are all very good and their rent are all the highest in their city and the vacancy are all very low. And to compare these two projects retail function, they all have a lot of international brands inside and both of them have a cinema and the rents are all the highest at their area and the vacancy are all 0%. And to compare the hotel function, the difference between this project is the, in IFC Hong Kong, the developer put the function in a single building, while in IFC Shanghai, they have put the, main, put the hotel function in the main towers. And the charge of, the, the charge of two hotels are all very high at their area. And to compare the service apartment, they all have the single service apartment building, and the rents are all the highest at their cities and the vacancy are all very low. And both of these two projects have similar parking lots and have strong connections with the public transportation around it. So in summary, from this aspect, IFC Hong Kong and IFC Shanghai have similar size and type of operation, and IFC Shanghai is constructed by the same developed design and management team to copy the successful case in Hong Kong. And we like to say they have similar position of financial value. And secondary, I'd like to show you our comparative study about the in indirect synergy aspect of the space value. And to compare these two projects' connection with the urban pedestrian system, we find that IFC Hong Kong became the core of the central skywalk system, while IFC Shanghai will be connected to the Lujiazui skywalk in the future. I've just seen that the, this system have already have just been finished these days. And that is to say, in Hong Kong, the central skywalk system is already existed and the IFC Hong Kong was just enforced it. So I, I, I still remember that the Anthony Wood have, rem have, have just talked about this and it's really a fantastic, fantastic thing if you go to the central area. So all the people were shifted into the, into the sky level, in the second level, and, and, they will, uh, and the pedestrian road is around one mile long. And uh, while in IFC, in IFC Shanghai, the Lu Jiazui Skywalk system is just planned after this work. So to compare these two projects' connection with the urban public transportation, the more, most public transportation were organized inside IFC Hong Kong, while the less public transportation were organized inside IFC, IFC Shanghai. To make, to make you see much more clearly, I put these two main sections of these two projects together. And we can, find, we can easily find there are, there are several, several public transportation in the middle of the IFC Hong Kong. There are metro stations, airport express, and uh, taxi terminals, and bus terminals. But you can't find any public transportation inside the IFC Shanghai. And there's also another very, thing, very weird thing is that if you need to go to the metro station line to in IFC Shanghai, you must go down from the underground level 1 to the underground level 2 first and then go up to the underground level one. That is to say, at the beginning of, this, of the IFC Shanghai, neither the, the, neither the developer nor the designers have noticed that they will connect to the metro, metro system. And to compare these two projects' interior public space, we, will, we find that the interior public space in, in IFC Hong Kong has strong logic and clear vertical connections. I would also like to mention that there is a very smart design at the, in, IFC, in IFC Hong Kong. So the designers just arranged these two different heights of tower at the opposite corner of the rectangular plan, and every, every passenger inside the, inside the building will easily see these two towers from the, from the glass roof of the atrium, and they will locate themselves very easily. And while we, look, we, while we research the interior space, public space in IFC Shanghai, we found it's less directional. You will easily lose your direction when you pass through the shopping mall. And so in summary, the IFC Hong Kong combines the urban transportation system with its public space reasonably, efficiently, and economically. While IFC Shanghai only gets some connection with the urban transportation, and its public space is only exists as a destination. So we would like to say that IFC Hong Kong created more space value. 
And furthermore, I'd like to show you our study about the urban value aspect. So uh, we find that these two projects do have different urban planning backgrounds. So if you have ever been to Hong Kong, you must have strong impress about the airport express system in Hong Kong. So the airport express terminal is on the ground level of the Hong Kong IFC, and there's also another terminal on the Kowloon Island. So the international passengers or the passengers who will, who will go to the airport could check in their luggage directly at the terminal, and so then go up to the uh, ground level or go to IFC or ICC to travel around to shopping before they go to the international airport by the airport express. While in Shanghai, I think some of you have just arrived here by the maglev train. You will find that the maglev train, the maglev train, train only connects the international airport with the metro station at the Longyang Road. That is to say, if you want to go to the CBD area, you need to make an exchange. That is really inconvenient. So for the further comparative study on the transportation methods from the international airport to CBD between Hong Kong and Shanghai, we find that in Hong Kong, the airport express will be the will be the most convenient and efficient way to go to the go, to go to the CBD area. It costs medium and, and costs least of the time. While in Shanghai, the maglev train plus metro system was the least convenient and and least efficient efficient way. So we also find that the the two projects' commercial orientation of the retail is different. The retail in IFC Hong Kong is mainly oriented to international passengers and local people, while the retail in IFC Shanghai is mainly focused on luxury and high-end brands. So, in order to have have deeper research, we make some we make some comparative study about these two projects' radi radiation effects. So, from the investigation of average visitors' flow rate, we find that the uh, neither in the weekday nor in the in, nor uh, both either in the weekday nor in the uh, weekend, uh, the IFC Hong Kong in the blue color have much more average visitors rate than in IFC Shanghai. I would also like to mention that when we went to, from our investigations in IFC Hong Kong from the yeah, at the weekday, there is a two peak of the visitors flow rate. One is at the noon time and another is at night. That is to say, the IFC Hong Kong do become a destination of the local people after work. So from the investigation of the average visitor's duration of stay, I would like to say that the, in IFC Hong Kong, most of people will stay more than one hour, and, less pe and, there's, and, and most of people in IFC Shanghai will stay, in, stay less than one hour. And from the, from the investigation of satisf satisfaction of public pedestrian system, most of people in Hong Kong feel, ex feel it's excellent and satisfied with the pedestrian system in IFC Hong Kong, while there are still a lot of people in IFC Shanghai think it's only ordinary. And to compare the satisfaction of public environment in IFC Hong Kong, in, in, Shang in Hong Kong, most of people feel excellent and satisfied with its public environment, and there are still some people think it's ordinary in Shanghai. So from the public approbate degree, most of the people in Hong Kong think that the IFC Hong Kong could be the community calling card or the city's calling card, while more than half of the people still think that the IFC Shanghai could be none of them. So in summary, the IFC Hong Kong connect airport together with the, with the downtown area thoroughly, while an IFC Hong Kong orients and attract wider range of people. So we'd like to say IFC Hong Kong have already become the calling card of central area, while IFC Shanghai is only a common part of Lu Jiazui CBD. So, and finally, I'd like to share you some of our conclusion about the comparative study. So we do find these two pro projects focus on different aspects of value. That is to say, the Hong Kong government focus on space and urban value of the urban building complex, while the government of Shanghai is more aware of the financial value of the urban building complex. And these two projects are also based on a different thoughts. And from this map, we can find that the, urban, the development of urban building complex in Hong Kong is mainly based on the planning of the urban infrastructure. This is a map, on the, uh, this is a map of the planning of the international airport on the 1990s. The government of Hong Kong have, have announced the plans of the intention project, which have included the, uh, the reclamation area and the airport express 
and also the and also the okay, and also the Hong Kong station of the airport express and the new reclamation land in the central area. So the later the IFC Hong Kong was built on that area and above the airport express station. And while the development of urban building complex in Shanghai used most efforts on the site and ignored, ignores its potential synergy to the city. So we also find that the operation operated under these two projects ha uh, has operated under different collaboration modes. So in Hong Kong, the government, developer, and architect is in interaction collaboration mode. That do makes more synergy between these, these three aspects. And in Shanghai or in mainland of China, the government developer and architect is in one-way collaboration mode. That is to say, the architect have less chance to speak with the government. I would also like to mention that in the past 20 years, the Hong Kong government have developed diversity and, vi and vitality urban life with limited land under the multiple intensive land use policy. And they also encourage the freestyle economy and create a dynamic public and private collaborations, and finally reinforce the ratio of private investment in public infrastructure. So, all in all, under the MILU policy, Hong Kong government collaborates with the developer and architect together to gain the financial value created by direct synergy, then obtain the space value created by indirect synergy from the combination of urban space and public transportation, and finally, create the space synergy to, act, act, to active, activate the community and even the whole city. This kind of mode is worth studying by Shanghai, I think. Thank you, thank you.